إن الذين كفروا لن تغني عنهم أموالهم ولا أولادهم من الله شيئا وأولئك أصحاب النار هم فيها خالدون No doubt about it, those who've disbelieved their monies, all their kinds of assets and their children will not be able to benefit them against Allah in any way and those are the people of fire in which they will remain forever مثل ما ينفقون في هذه الحياة الدنيا The example of whatever they spend in this worldly life is something like wind like a wind. فيها صر in it there is a freezing biting cold. أصابت حرث قوم ظلموا أنفسهم. It struck the crop of a people that had done wrong to themselves. So these people have a farm, they have a crop, and a freezing wind came and it struck that area. فأهلكته and it destroyed the entire crop. وَمَا ظَلَمَهُمُ اللَّهِ And Allah had not done them wrong. وَلَكِنْ أَنفُسَهُمْ يَظْلِمُونَ However, they're doing wrong to themselves. When Allah says the example of what they spend in this worldly life is a comment on the enemies of the Prophet ﷺ who were spending whatever amounts of money, horses, weaponry, food, supplies, logistics, whatever they were spending to end Islam. They were investing to annihilate, to eliminate Islam from the region. That means, if we understand that, then until Judgment Day, there are going to be campaigns, well-financed, well-funded campaigns. Some of them will be media campaigns. Some of them will be educational campaigns. Some of them will be social engineering campaigns. Some of them will be military campaigns. Some of them will be economic policy campaigns. But all of those campaigns will be designed to eliminate Islam in some way from society. How do we get Muslim youth, more and more of them, to become atheists before they get out of college? I was in Pakistan not too long ago and I was talking to some young kids in Karachi at a dinner and they had gone to a private school in Karachi, right? Their parents could afford the tuition so they put them in like these high level schools and the higher level school means you got white people teaching you, that's what that means. They had American teachers, British teachers, etc. And every one of their American teachers was ex-military. And half their education was showing that the Prophet ﷺ was a liar in Karachi. And the kid held on to his faith even going through that school. He goes, you know, my entire, up until my ninth, 10th grade education, all I heard in my school from my teacher is all these accusations against the Prophet ﷺ and why Islam doesn't make any sense and why it's a lie. And you would have to consume hundreds and hundreds of hours of anti-Islam propaganda on YouTube to get the kind of indoctrination that was being provided by parents paying full tuition to give them good English, right? And that's what they're getting. And the kids survived that indoctrination. He held on to his faith. But he goes, most of my peers don't. I met kids in Muslim countries that I won't name, including Pakistan, other countries I went to, 13, 14 year old girls. I said, what's the hardest thing about your age? Praying. What do you mean praying? You're in a Muslim country. Yeah, the only girls who pray in the school are the ones that get made fun of in a Muslim country. We're not talking about Australia or America or Canada. We're talking about the Muslim world. There. It's a huge problem for a young girl to put on a hijab. All her friends will make fun of her. Even the teacher will make fun of her. In a Muslim country. That didn't happen on its own. This, you know, being ashamed of who you are, being ashamed of your religion, considering your religion backwards, wanting to be like the colonizers who came and robbed you not even a century ago, and your greatest desire in the world is to be one day the greatest coconut you can be. Where did that come from? It didn't come on its own. There are billions spent into creating that kind of psychological, social engineering and indoctrination. Right? It doesn't happen on its own. It's not automatic. It's not on autopilot. There's a campaign. To me, the real battlefield for Islam is actually the college campus. And not even college campuses in the non-Muslim countries. The college campus in Muslim countries. Who's caring about those youth? We're thinking we should bring them to the masjid. Bro, they're not even thinking about Islam at this time. They're on a different planet because investment is being made into them because when they graduate from college, they're going to be the ones that are going to be running the companies. They're going to be the ones that are going to be working in government. They're going to be moving and shaking in society. If we can rip Islam out of them, then Islam will be gone from society within 20 years. Good plan. It works. And here we're thinking the real cause of Islam is everywhere else, but college is fitna. No, no, no. College is the battlefield. It's the ideological battlefield, right? And they're pouring money into it. I don't say rhetorically like, you know, pounding the table and saying, and the kufar can spend whatever they want. They will never be able to defeat Islam. I'm not interested in hyperbole. You know what I'm interested in? Allah gave victory to Muslims when they were on their mission. And when the Muslims are on their mission, then whatever the kuffar spend doesn't do anything. It's not a free ride. The kuffar can do whatever they want. You will win anyway. Don't worry, because you're so special. No, we're not that special unless we act special. The believers have to emulate the behavior of the believers. Then the victory from Allah is guaranteed.
So what sometimes we do is, we take these guarantees of the kuffar losing, and we feel good about ourselves like a placebo, and we assume there's nothing to do on our part. Like we're already doing our part, mashallah. Now we're just waiting on Allah to just bring the freezing wind. That's the empty kind of emotional rhetoric that I want us to get out of. We want to become honest with the word of Allah. When it's pointing at the kuffar in a critical way, we take that. And when it's pointing at us in a critical way, we take that also. May Allah Azza make us worthy of those winds that come against the enemy. What I'm reminded of is what Allah did with Fir'aun. You know, Fir'aun's biggest problem became Musa Alayhi Salaam. And he became a PR problem for him. Because what happened in the castle with the snake and all of that, with the python, what happened was the word spread in Egypt that the Pharaoh, who calls himself God, got scared of a snake and he got terrified and he had to back off. So he's looking pretty bad. So he had to create an entire campaign of the magicians who will defeat Musa. He didn't say Fir'aun is going to defeat Musa. He was spreading the campaign that the magicians are going to defeat Musa. But that wasn't enough. He didn't just need to destroy Musa a.s. He's just killing one man. That's not a big problem for him. He needs to destroy the image. And the only way to destroy the image is to create the largest convention, gather everybody. Are you coming or what? Forcing people to show up, gathering these magicians, paying them lump sums of money, setting up a day with great festivities, Yomuz Zina, you would imagine the greatest convention ever held in the history of Egypt, all so they can undo the damage already being done by Musa salam. In this grand show, the whole nation can watch in one time. And what happens? The people that he paid top money to, to stand by him, they started their show with Bi'izzati Fir'aun. That's how they started their demonstration. By the glory of the Pharaoh. That's how they started. And by the end of that demonstration, they're doing sajda to Allah, and they're telling the entire crowd, we believe in the master of Musa and Harun, right? You know what Fir'aun did? Fir'aun paid for the biggest da'wah convention in Egypt, in the entire history of Egypt. <laughs> And that's what he did. And it's also interesting that Allah says, In this surah, Don't worry, don't be saddened, don't feel weak. You will be on the very supreme position if in fact you truly are believers. So now if we're not in the supreme position, then maybe we need to check where we stand in terms of our iman and what that iman requires of us. Because the byproduct of that is antum ul-a'lam. That's the byproduct. May Allah Azza give us a correct understanding of this book and make us committed to its guidance and its teachings. And may Allah Azza destroy the plans of those who attempt to hurt or to take away the deen of Allah from this earth because we know their plans will always fail. And may Allah make us of those who bring the victory of this deen to this earth because if we don't do it, Allah doesn't need us. We need him. If you turn your backs, Allah will just replace you with another nation that's not you, and they won't be like you. Meaning they won't be losers like you, they'll actually do the job. Right? So we're dispensable. We've been honored with Islam, but that doesn't mean we're indispensable. You know, we're not some special race. The only thing that makes us special is the iman in our hearts. May Allah Azza wa Jal preserve that iman, strengthen that iman, and allow us to cultivate generations upon generations that live and die by that iman.